During our visits to farms, the Shamba Ship Up team have seen the many difficulties farmers face throughout Kenya. Many of the farmers are telling us that most of their problems are because the weather is so unpredictable. The climate is changing, so now the planting season is uncertain. Rains come or don't come. They are too heavy, too light or too late, causing many problems for farmers. In this episode, we want to give farmers the help and knowledge they need to adapt their farming methods, increase their income and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We have decided to take you back to some of the old shambas that Tony and Naomi visited to demonstrate simple ways that you can learn to adapt to climate change. Welcome to Shamba Shepa. Today we are in Kikuyu at Samuel Kamau's Shamba. Samuel Kamau's three-acre Shamba is in Kiambu County. His greenhouse has capsicums and he grows maize and spinach for local markets. Kenya Highland Seed is coming to look at the greenhouse. As with any farm, it's best to start from the ground up. So, we'll test the soil. Without wasting any more time, let's get to work! Soilcase is building a new technology to help farmers test their soil, a handheld soil scanner. Instead of sending soil samples far away to labs and awaiting weeks for results, this new gadget does the work instantly on your farm. So how are your spinach doing? Okay, the spinach is doing pretty well, but I have a few, few problems. Have you ever had your soil tested? Yo, I did sometimes back, but I never got the result. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So don't worry. I've brought in an expert from Soil Case. Yeah, okay. He's got this device, mm -hmm. can test the soil and get results instantly. That's going to be nice to me. Yeah, Austin. <laughs> Hey, this is Samuel. Tell us about uh, the device. It's called a handheld scanner. Mm -hmm. Now, um, what we are trying to do is that we are trying to get uh, the soil analysis services closer to the farmers. Mm -hmm. And um, what uh, the extension officer will do, um, he will go around the farm, taking uh, soil samples with the organ. Mm -hmm. He'll then put it in a convenient um, container, say uh, like a bucket. And then all he does is uh, take the scanner, put it in the bucket, press the scan button, he'll get a report downloaded to his smartphone. Right. So we will provide this together with the smartphone. Are we gonna get the same result as in the lab? The nutrients that we check for mm -hmm. will be slightly less. Yeah. But you have the most important ones. But we have the most important ones, yeah. The scanner measures the nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium, the pH and the organic matter. The results include your own personal fertilizer and lime advice. It's your very own soil laboratory held in your hands. On a sample, as your farm is, there are some areas that have um, that show that there are problems with your soil. Okay. So using this, you can get immediate results on what those problems are, okay. and you could address them. And uh, because um, the extension officer comes with it to your farm, it means then that um, nobody goes with your soil anywhere. You just get your results immediately. Uh, we are targeting uh, uh, agro dealers and uh, extension officers because they are more in touch with the farmers mm -hmm. and they are able to penetrate to rural areas. Half the price, cheaper yeah. and faster. Mm -hmm. yeah. You are going to get the, the result instantly. Yes. Instantly. Mm -hmm. And as you are saying, um, the last time you did a soil test, mm -hmm. uh, you never got your results. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So by using this, you can get your results uh, speedily and you can get, uh, you can start working on your shamba. You can see it's about to rain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. We are in Kikuyu with Samuel Kamau. We have analyzed the soil by doing a soil test. Next up, we join Naomi to check out his greenhouse. Peter, the technical director for Kenya Highland Seed, is an expert in growing greenhouse vegetables. He's here to look at Samuel's capsicums, which aren't the best they could be. Samuel, yeah. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. When did you plant this? Around uh, three months ago. And I see uh, you're not doing any drip irrigation at all. Yeah, I had uh, some uh, complication with the drip line, so I had to remove it because they were blocking it. Okay. So I decided to just uh, be sprinkling with the horse pipe. The soil's a bit dry. Yeah, um, for sure. When I have a look here, right. I can see that uh, the watering has not been very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and these crops with a very big plant like this mm -hmm. require a lot of water. Yeah. Uh, they need to be able to take up the nutrients with the water. When the soil gets very hard like this, which it is, it's hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It will constrict the roots and the root hairs. So now nutrients and everything won't come up. Mm -hmm. 
So that will cause a lot of the yellowing as well. Yeah. Because we're not getting Enough proper nutrients. water and nutrients to the leaves. Um, and as you can see, this is a very vigorous plant. Yeah. Very tall, mm -hmm. a lot of leaf and a lot of fruit. Mm -hmm. And in order to get the fruit development, we need good water and nutrients to come from the soil. A plant that has too many stems would give a good harvest because it will take away energy from the main stem. We've obviously gone with a lot of different shoots coming out of this plant. Yes. Now that will make the plant overloaded. So we're going to start to get fruits which are misshapen like this, yes. which are very small. Yes. These fruits will never grow into a proper fruit now. Right. Okay, because there's too much energy going to these fruits when really we want the energy going up the main stems. Yeah. So if we have a look at the main stem here, yes. we have a nice fruit developing here. Yes. And then the next fruit on this stem is this one here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so with good watering and nutrient uptake, these fruits will develop into very nice fruits. Yes. Mm -hmm. This fruit here, mm -hmm. we actually need to remove it yes. now mm -hmm. in order to let the energy of the plant go into these fruits, which is where we want okay. the energy to move. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Well, that's good. We're here mm -hmm. to, to teach and to help farmers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Something further I notice is we're getting a lot of powdery mildew coming in. Yes. Powdery mildew is a big problem for farmers. It comes when there's a cloud in the morning and hot sun in the afternoon. Powdery mildew likes warm, damp air that can take over the whole crop. In the market, uh, I find that we don't have uh, the fungicide that can uh, reduce the powdery mildew for a few days. We only have the ones for 14 days. So, okay. and uh, again, I am harvesting so that I, I feel that I am not going to give people uh, a lot of uh, pesticide in the uh, capsicum. Okay, well, we can refer you to some experts okay. uh, in the chemical industry who will be able to give you some different alternatives okay. mm -hmm. in order to control this mildew. Okay. It's not safe to use fungicides during harvesting. So, Peter promises to find Samuel a fungicide with low post-harvest interval lasting just a few days. Uh, there's a farmer not very far from here. He's very good. I mean, he has all okay. the, most of what you said. I think we'd go and visit, right? Excellent. Uh, Samuel's neighbors have been well trained in growing capsicums. The crop is the same age as Samuel's, but it looks much better. Comparing uh, this greenhouse and Samuel's, what's the difference in terms of making profit? Yeah, I think this greenhouse, number one, it's got a very good irrigation system. The drip irrigation is well laid out, mm -hmm. so the plants are getting the exact amount of water mm -hmm. and fertilizer as you're growing the crop. Um, also, Muya has kept this house very, very clean. Samuel had issues at the beginning with his drip irrigation blocking up. So he had to resort to watering with a hose pipe, which is never the most accurate, and you get uneven watering. Mm -hmm. um, and further, Samuel had quite a lot of weeds in his greenhouse, which you need to remove because that's competition to the plant. Mm -hmm. So much better to keep your house very, very clean as this one is, um, and then you will get a much better response from your capsicum plants. If Samuel practiced what we saw right here, would his ears become better? Yes, it certainly would. Samuel could expect four to five times more than what he's currently producing in his greenhouse. Mm -hmm. His plants will also be much more even and that will give you a much more uniform fruit which all leads to a much better yield at the end of the day. Now because I have seen it for myself, right. I have to pull up my socks and work hard and achieve like this farm. And you will, and I know you will. Yeah. We all have to learn how to be more efficient and productive. And the first very important thing to do for Samuel is to make sure his gutters are all fixed and in good working condition so that he can use the captured rainwater for drip irrigation on his greenhouse. That's one farm done. Moving on to the next chamber. Can you predict when the rain starts? Let's talk to some of our farmers and hear what they have to say. Now, I want us to talk about the rains, because this river is quite important. I'll start quickly with you, Frederick. How do you tell when it's about to rain? I check the QL app. I can check the meteorological site for Kenya. And mm. also look for the bulletins. You depend on science. 
Yeah, yeah, we depend on science. And the neighbors. And the old ways. Man. Okay. Haya tukuje kwa mzee. Mm. Hapo zamani wazee wa zamani wangejua namna gani kwamba kuna ishara au dalili ya kwamba kutanyesha. Iko na miti ilikuwa inaitwa There were some trees. They would bloom in red flowers. Na hiyo miti unaiona siku hizi ama ilikwenda kabisa. No, I don't see them. Just a few scattered all over. In my compound I only have one. Do you know about those trees that had the signs of rain? I know them in the Kime, our language. Yes. Did you see them now or that's it? They are few. They are few. They disappear. Yeah. Yeah. They disappear. Aya hiyo ni miti kuna dalili gani nyingine? Dalili nyingine? Another one were butterflies. Many butterflies flying in one direction. Lots of them. They would be followed by some birds eating the butterflies. We could see them go this way. But not knowing where they headed to. That happens 2 weeks before rains. On the date 15th of the month the rains would start. Every year March 15th. So Frederick between the two which one do you think works? The modern or the traditional methods? Nowadays you can't really tell. We've been told to expect rain and we prepare and we don't get it. Ah. So the, the app tells you it's going to rain, no rain. Okay. Thank you so much. Welcome to Shamba Shepherd. And believe it or not, you are in Makueni County where it's raining, drizzling and still foggy. Nevertheless, today we are going to learn about the economics of farming. I want to find out if productivity means more profits. As long as you are getting a higher price. Well, let's hope that the rain stops as we go and meet our farmer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Teresia lives on our farm with her daughter-in-law Alice. Their farm is in Makueni County, which is usually very dry. Farmers usually struggle with water, but not today. Sheila from Ikrisat is in Teresia's pigeon pea plot. She's not very happy the way Teresia has planted the crop mixed up with cow peas and has some tips on how Teresia can do better. So Sheila, you've had a look around the field. What are your observations? She has intercropped the peach on pea with the cow pea, of which that is a problem with it. Mm -hmm. You should not intercrop a legume with another legume because the pest and the disease, they will concentrate on one place. It's good to intercrop a cereal with a legume because they have different pests and diseases. And then if she has to do intercropping, she should do it row by row because for her, she has intercropped in the same row. She should do the alternate intercropping whereby he should do one row of peach on pea and the other row for the cereals, maybe the sorghum or the finger millet, but you should not intercrop a cereal with a cereal or a legume with a legume. To intercrop pigeon pea with cereal crops, like finger millet, first plant pigeon peas in rows two meters apart. Then plant the cereals in rows between the rows of pigeon peas, so there is one meter from the row of cereals to the row of pigeon peas. Pigeon peas are a legume. That means they fix nitrogen in the soil. So they improve the soil for cereals. Their roots are also deeper than roots of cereal crops. So they bring nutrients up from deeper in the soil. So intercropping cereals with pigeon pea will give you a bigger cereal harvest than if you just plant cereals on their own. This kind of farming, is it good for her as a woman? It's good for her because it will give her nutrition for the family and also income mm -hmm. after selling the produce. So how is the pigeon pea nutritious, especially to women and children? Pigeon pea is very nutritious, mm. not only to a human being, but also to animals. Mm -hmm. First of all, pigeon pea is a legume crop. It's high in protein content, so it can be substituted with the meat products. So you can take the pigeon pea and leave the meat products. It's also, a, it has a folate, a vitamin, which is important for pregnant women. It mm -hmm. can provide up to 76% of the foliage needed for pregnant women. Mm -hmm. That is why it's a very important crop for a woman to harvest and have it in a home. It's also good in sugars. It has the fiber, which is good for peristalsis and digestion in our bodies. It has vitamin A, which is good for our bodies also, mm -hmm. C, B1, and B2. Okay. It also has some minerals like calcium, uh, the magnesium, and, uh, and the rest, copper and calcium. Thus, it improves the nutrition of the farmer. 
very highly, especially for the small older farmer mm -hmm. who is not able to access the other types of proteins. First, wash the pigeon peas. Soak them until they are soft. Fry onions and tomatoes. Add a little water and leave to boil. Then add the pigeon peas and cook until the stew is ready. Serve the pigeon peas stew with rice. Don't forget to have some fruit to give you a good balanced diet. It's also good for livestock. This leaves has a lot of uh, nitrogen content. So for livestock, it's nutritional. Mm -hmm. Yes. And can you use it as firewood? After harvesting the leaves, you give it to the animals, the seeds and the rest. You can use the stem after drying it. You can use it for firewood. Dry areas, it can be hard to find firewood. The stems of the pigeon pea can be used in a jiko for fire for cooking. So you can eat the pigeon peas, your cow can eat the leaves and you can use the stems for firewood. Nothing goes to waste. Can I use the leaves and the stem as a cell cover in my chamber? As the plant matures, yes. the older leaves always drops. So yes. that one becomes manure or it, it covers the crop. Mm -hmm. It acts as a mulch, preserves the water inside and the moisture. Also, pitch on pea is a very good crop. It fixes nitrogen by itself. So when you plant the next season, your soil will be good in nitrogen. Where can farmers get these varieties of pigeon pea? Most of the government organizations, the uh, Kenya Agricultural Livestock and Research, have these seeds. So if you go to these uh, institutes, you can get the seeds, and mostly they sell it at a cheaper price. It is very important to actually know where you're going to get your, your, your seeds from. It's very important to get a certified seed. Why? Because if you plant a seed which is not certified, sometimes you can be sold a seed which is not viable. All you ask for, another seed. Because you have used your money, you have bought the seed. If you grow, there's nothing in the field. What will you do? You can be sold a seed which is not a yielding. What is the need of planting the seeds of peach on pea which is not yielding? They say knowledge is power, and we hope Teresa has all the knowledge she needs to improve on a pigeon pea farming. Now that you have seen how the use of greenhouses by farmers is a good climate change adaptation, let's look at another way you can adapt to climate change, and that is the use of energy-saving cookstops. Paul's idea has traveled all the way up from the Tanzanian Agricultural Research Institute in Morogoro University, Tanzania. Paul is a researcher and is here to give us his knowledge and advice about ways to save time, money and the environment through using energy-saving eco-stoves. Elizabeth, yes. food is very important. What do you use for cooking? I use firewood to cook. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, and where do you get this firewood? We have a big challenge getting firewood here. We either buy or cut down a tree. And cutting trees is not also very good. Mm. Yes. Uh, how long do you take to cook? It takes two to three hours for the food to get ready. Two to three hours? Mm. That's a long time. Mm. Frederick, mm. you must be dying of hunger by the time the food is ready. Yes, close to starving. Even. Uh, so it takes a lot of time. Mm. Uh, I also have a problem with smoke. I cough a lot and tear up. Uh -huh. mm. And uh, does Frederick have time to get into the kitchen to help you do the cooking? Sometimes, yes. When the leader says, no, we just live here, two of us. Yes. So we have to assist each other. Mm -hmm. Why would you recommend the improved Jiko? Mm. First, fast cooking. You save time by 50%. Oh. So if it is two hours, use only one hour. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right. And you, you know why? Mm. Because... Uh, it conserves heat. That's why it is very efficient in cooking. Okay. Compared to the three stones uh, you are using, mm. you are using a lot of uh, wood, but also heat is lost because of the open spaces. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, yes. Right. Yeah. So when you talk about open spaces, you want to say the improved Jiko is like, it's closed, it's airtight? Exactly. Oh. Yeah. You know, there is no much smoke. Okay, so I would be safe. I yes. Would, I would go around here with the funny space. Smell. <laughs> yes, yeah. But also you, you won't have problems of coughing. Ah, yes. My eyes. Yes. Mm -hmm. No more such problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
How is the Jiko? Can anyone handle it? Mm -hmm. Today, I'll demonstrate the use of portable Jiko. Okay. You can move with it uh, from mm -hmm. one place to another. Mm -hmm. All right. Is this improved Jiko safe? Yeah, it is safe. Less uh, fire angel. So even our children can be close to the Jiko, mm -hmm. assisting mother or father while cooking. Mm -hmm. And also they can pa take part in cooking. And are they affordable? Yes, they are affordable. Apart from fueled consumption, it is associated with the environmental conservation. Mm -hmm. You use less firewood. So you will reduce the trip of going uh, to search for fuel wood. Yes. If you had maybe you used to go three to four times a week, they will be going only once a week. Mm -hmm. Well, we've had enough about the stores. It's time we saw them in action. First things first, the fuel. Today, we are cooking using wood. Elizabeth will have to prepare more wood to burn for her fire. Paul doesn't need as much wood, so he can light his fire much quicker. Paul's cooker is up and running. Elizabeth is still organizing her kindling to light. Paul's beans go onto the fire, and already we are seeing and breathing less smoke. Paul's beans are cooking nicely as Elizabeth's fire is only just ready to go. The smoke is already stinging her eyes and Frederick's as well. <laughs> Fast forward, Paul's beans are cooked. He's breathed less smoke, he's used less wood and he's used less time. As delicious as Elizabeth's beans will be, Paul's proved his stove is far more economical. Uh -huh. The time they were spending uh, for cooking, uh -huh. but also going to look for firewood, uh -huh. will be used for other activities like uh -huh. farming, uh -huh. uh, business, and others. All right. Yeah. Paul's eco stove has really impressed me. But what about Frederick? This improved Tijiko, uh, I'm so much impressed with it. And I would like even to have one in my, my home compound. And even uh, the whole village, I wish each, each family has one. So that we can uh, secure our, our environment. Because the former people uses a lot of firewood and it pollutes the environment. 